is Sunday, March 3rd, 2019, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. It was another week that had news and political junkies glued to their screens from Michael Cohen's testimony on Capitol Hill, complete with another moment in the spotlight for Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, to Hanoi, where President Trump again seemed to enjoy the company of the leader he once derided as the little rocket man. We'll have to wait to see whether that friendship delivers truly measurable progress, though, as they ended their summit without a deal. So plenty happening beyond the mitten this week, but we have so much to talk about here at home. The smiles seemed a mile wide on Monday as Fiat Chrysler and Mayor Duggan announced a massive investment on Detroit's east side. The death of the sedan uh, has meant the surge of the SUV and all of those Jeeps mean billions of dollars in investment and thousands of jobs. Good news for Detroit, good news for our governor. Now I could make a joke about the beefier suspension of a Jeep being necessary for driving those vehicles out of the plant and onto Michigan's roads, but it's not all that funny to us anymore. This week the governor is going to deliver her budget on Tuesday, which means it is time to finally provide the details on her central campaign promise. What is the fair and just way to pay for the road fix? And is the fair and just way actually an effective way? Will it bring us better roads? Beyond the roads, she also painted a pretty grim picture of all of our infrastructure needs uh, in her State of the State address. She described a state education system that is in desperate need for change. None of this is free or easy. Well, where does Governor Whitmer want to take us? And how does she intend to afford the ticket to get us there? We're going to ask her. She's here today on Flashpoint. Senate Minority Leader and just citizen Gretchen Whitmer, she appeared on this program uh, a number of times. This is her first time to be back with us since becoming Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you very much for coming this morning, Governor. Good to have you here. It's good to be with and you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you I, I think this all the time when people run for office, you spend all this time thinking about all the things that I can do, great programs, great ideas. Nobody thinks, I can't wait to get in office and have to cut. Um, you, you did give us all those, a lot of great ideas in your State of the State address, but they're all going to cost money. Tuesday, you have to start delivering on where it's coming from. Right. So. Uh, Governor Snyder gave me some advice during between the election and when I took my oath of office mm -hmm. and it was you know the the inaugural speech is about 40,000 feet the state of the state is 20 where you start to really identify for people the rubber hits the road pardon another road analogy yes, yes. but um, on the the budget I'll be introducing that on Tuesday morning mm -hmm. and you know it is going to be focused on the fundamentals that I got elected on the things that I know are going to make a difference to people in their homes and to business people in their workplaces fixing the damn roads mm -hmm. cleaning up our drinking water and ensuring that we all have a real path to a high wage job through better skills and that starts with the education of our children and goes through ensuring everyone has a path to a post-secondary degree yeah. or certi certificate you basically have three choices when it comes to the roads. You can either raise more money through taxes, you can raise more money by you know selling bonds, or you can take money from other things and then have to backfill what you've taken those out of. Where are you on that balance, do you suppose? So when you look at the state budget, the general fund portion, which is the portion over which we have discretion, mm -hmm. is virtually the same size it was 20 years ago. And that tells you a lot about why our roads are as bad as they are and why our school outcomes are as poor as they are as well. Yeah. Um, we have got to make sure that we make the right investment to rebuild our infrastructure, but also to stop stealing money out of the school aid fund, stop taking away money from uh, ensuring we have paths to skills. I'm really heartened by the fact that the Senate Majority Leader, uh, Republican Leader Mike Shirky, mm -hmm. has acknowledged that we are not going to be able to rebuild Michigan without you know, ensuring that we've got additional resources to do that. And meaning so, taxes. Meaning, yeah. So we will, you will get Nobody a lot more. Nobody likes to use the word in Lansing, but that's, well, that's what we're talking about. But the fact of the matter is that word has been so vilified and it's, it's destructive to a conversation. We had to talk about investing in ourselves. 
if we want anyone to come and invest in Michigan, we've got to invest in ourselves. We've got to make sure that employers know they're going to have the skilled workforce, that when they get here, our roads aren't going to you know, undermine their bottom line, that they can make an investment here. But there is probably here. that tipping point somewhere, and, and this is what you've, I guess, had to decide in your request as to where, uh, what level of taxation, of extra taxes, it begins to cut into Michigan's viability and attractiveness to people to wanting to live here, to people uh, succeeding here. There's a very, somewhere is that sweet spot, right? Well, let me tell you this. I was at the NGA this past weekend, the National Governors Association. Mm -hmm. Governors, 48 governors from across the country convened, Republican and Democratic alike. We're all focused on infrastructure and closing a skills gap. A lot of other states are making much more headway than we are. Their problems are not as big as ours are, and yet they are going right to solving through making sure that they've got more revenue coming in. We've got to do the same. We cannot lose this race, and we are starting so far behind with so much ground to make up. I am cognizant that we've got to make sure that people in our state are, are able to afford it, but here's the thing. We're already paying a road tax. When you pay $862 no a year it. to yes. fix your car, it's the worst kind of road tax you can pay because it doesn't actually fix the damn roads. The question that I get all the time when we talk about roads on this program, I know I will have a bunch of emails if I don't ask this, about are the com we, unlike many other states, have these massive, huge car haulers and massive trucks uh, eating up our roads. Are they paying, paying their fair share, and isn't that why the roads are in such bad shape? How do you handle that one? Well, it, it, it's partial. Uh, part of the issue, all right, but the fact of the matter is we have not been spending what we need to rebuild roads. We've had a Clearly. succession of leaders who didn't want to do the hard work and were content to manage the decline just by filling potholes when we should have been rebuilding roads. And that's why it is such a huge amount of work ahead of us. And that's why it's got such a huge price tag on it too. But we've got to get started because every day we don't, it gets worse and it gets more expensive. Okay, we've danced around it for a little while and I don't expect you to scoop yourself uh, from Tuesday, but in general, strokes, where should the money come from? Well, you know, I have always tended to believe that uh, those that use the road should pay for the road, mm -hmm. that, you know, school dollars should be going to schools, that uh, the taxpayer should know that every dollar that's supposed to be going to a particular place is actually going there. I know it's a novel uh, philosophy, but I'm going to do everything I can to continue uh, to ensure that that philosophy is reflected in the budget. Which would then would suggest either fee user fees uh, on our licenses and uh, the way that we register our cars or gas tax. Well, I'm going to put something on the table Although on Although we have to think about what, what electrical vehicles which do not spend time at the gas pump. That's right. But spend so, time on the roads. Go ahead. You are debating yourself. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just ran around my own argument. Yes. No, uh, I'm going to be putting something on the table on Tuesday. It's going to be real. Mm -hmm. It is going to be thoughtful. And I think people are going to see the wisdom in this plan. Um, if the legislature or someone else has a better idea, I'm all for it. So long as we get to a place where we're actually spending what we need to to fix the problem. Beyond the roads, you, as I said, you painted a rather dire picture of the rest of our infrastructure needs, um, which is also going to demand money. Uh, what's your outlook now for trying to fix the infrastructure while you're dealing with this massive multi-billion dollar problem? Well, when we address the core road and bridge issue, it helps us to alleviate all the dollars that have been siphoned off of other parts of the budget. Uh, I think it will strengthen our ability to draw an investment and to do the things we've got to do to fix the roads and mm -hmm. work on the infrastructure for water. There are um, it will be a real plan on Tuesday that you'll see that gets us where we need to be. Uh, over the years, we have had a lot of Democrats pushing for a progressive income tax in the state of Michigan. How do you feel about that? Uh, personally, that's something that I think makes sense. However, I know that it takes going to the voters. It's not just a simple mm -hmm. thing to do by passing something to the legislature and putting my signature on it. It's a lot of work to get it done, but I think that that's a healthy conversation that we should probably have in this state. Some, is it, is it, would you, will you be active in trying to make that happen, do you think? I, Devin, right now, every ounce of energy I have is being spent <laughs> on getting this budget done, to introduce it and to work to my tail off to make sure that we get it done. Yeah. People of our state elected a Republican legislature and a Democratic governor. Uh, in many districts, Republican districts. This is a reality that you've, that you've dealt with when you were in, in the legislature, you understand it. Sure, and I can build bridges with anyone who actually wants to solve a problem. But I'm gonna, it's going to take a lot of work, and I'm 
reached out across the aisle. We've started those conversations, but we got a lot of work yet to do. You got some pretty good news in the city of Detroit this past week. I got to take a quick break. We come back. We'll talk about the uh, investment announced uh, from Fiat Chrysler. This is Flashpoint on Local 4 with Governor Gretchen Whitmer.